No, thank you. So welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for signing up for this um, webinar with uh, Krishna Solanki. Um, Krishna approached me a couple of months ago, I think it was, wasn't it, to say I'd like to do a talk about uh, low-code and no-code websites. And it's not something we've ever addressed before, I think. We've done several marketing things, several website things, several Google Analytics type things, but nothing in this space at all. So Krishna, thank you very much for the suggestion. Um, and it's been fairly popular as well. So we've got lots of people who have signed up either to join in live or to join in later. Um, I'm Louise from Cambridge Network. Um, a lot of you uh, know my name, I think, because I I'm, I'm email you to death with the events and things that we run. Um, we've run several, um, Alexi, uh, we've run several webinars. We do several things in person as well. And I know um, many of you have been to those. Uh, do sign up for the events mailing so you get uh, an idea of what's going on. Although, to be fair, there's not much going on over, the, over August. We'll be back again in September. Um, so welcome, Krishna, again to, to today's thing. Um, for general housekeeping, if you just like to keep yourselves on mute while Krishna's talking, shove some questions in the chat. If you do have a question about you can't see or hear or something, then please unmute yourself or whatever and ask or pop it in the chat and we'll try and sort that out as well. Um, I think that's all from me. We've got about an hour's slot. Krishna knows her stuff, so feel free to ask questions. Um, so Krishna, over to you. Thank you. So yeah, thanks, Louise. Um, firstly, I've got to say thank you to everyone who's attending. And obviously, the pleasure is all mine to be able to share all these beautiful tips um, to help you effectively and convert website using no code platforms. So that's what we're talking about. But um, Louise has already mentioned who I am, but just to give you a little bit more information, I am Krishna Solanki. I am the founder, creative director and Squarespace expert uh, at Krishna Slanky Designs, and we are an award-winning brand and Squarespace website design agency renowned for our experience, creativity, well-defined processes, and confident approach. Now, that was a bit of a mouthful, so I don't expect anyone to actually remember any of that, but I'm here predominantly to help you kind of demystify the stigma around no-code and traditional um, website platforms. So let's get cracking. Today we're going to be covering CMS platforms, what that actually means, the benefits and challenges of no code platforms. Um, we're going to cover some top tips to help you boost your company's online presence. So we'll cover a little bit about website design, user experience, and we'll touch upon SEO. And at the end of this, when Louise sends across all of the information in the recordings, there'll be a, a great PDF guide that goes into how to perfect your website launch. So there's a little checklist that comes along with this as well, which is which is great. So first things first, do you guys use a CMS at the moment? It'd be great if we could get some interactivity either in the chat or on a poll, um, whatever you guys find easier. It would be nice to kind of see. Poll, um, should, I, should I launch that? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Let's yeah. do that. It's got the first two questions on. And, uh... Okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, can, can I actually just say as a technophobe, I've no idea what a CMS is. I know. And this is brilliant. This is what I was hoping for. And I love the fact that you have and Janet has already mentioned um, that you don't know what CMS is, because that's what we're going to cover today. That's the next slide. So brilliant. I can see the results coming in. So we've got a yes with six to nine or oh, six out of nine people saying yes. And do you find it easy to use? Ah, oh, mixed reviews here. So this is brilliant. I'm not sure if you guys can see the results coming through, but once they've once you've stopped answering and once we've got to the end of it, okay. we'll get an idea about it all. So yeah, yeah, they exciting. can't see it at the moment, but when we go. Excellent. This is good. And I love the fact that you guys are really interactive and actually taking part in the poll and even in the chat. I am going to leave Louise to like man that because otherwise I'll get distracted and I want to focus on <laughs> making sure you get all the right information. But Brilliant. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, it's okay. oh no. still got some questions coming in. Lovely. It's looking right, quite mixed at the minute, Louise. It it's got 50% of people using it, using a CMS. And at the moment, a lot of people are saying no to if they find it easy to use. Well, that's great from my perspective right. because I can help you with that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Three quarters of the people have participated, so let's end it there. Excellent, brilliant. And share the results. Awesome. See all that, everybody. 
Can everyone see that? So we've got 47% saying yes, you use a CMS and 50% or 53% saying no. And if you find it easy to use, we've got 37% saying yes and 63% saying no. Brilliant. This is this is really interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Stop Let's that. move on. Let's, yeah. <laughs> Let's, that. Let's move on to answering that question of what does CMS stand for? Now, great question by yourself, Joe, and Janet, who said no straight up. CMS stands for Content Management System. So in a nutshell, that is a system that allows you to manage that content online or in a digital application. So specifically speaking about websites today, the content management system would be the platform that allows you to put that text, that image onto a area, onto the internet. OK, that's the simplest terms I can kind of simplify in, which makes the most sense. Now, going on to why you need a CMS. So essentially, you need a CMS or a platform that allows you to put your information online because it's it's easy for you to collaborate. It's easy for you to have an online digital presence for a website, in particular, a web application. Um, in most instances, you don't need to have any coding knowledge depending on which kind of platform you're using. You've got great SEO features and um, extensions that can be used by using a CMS platform. And 80 to 90% of them at the moment, CMS platforms, because there are a lot of them, which we're going to cover, they do actually have pre-designed templates and designs. So it makes it a lot easier for you to actually put your business online and make it really accessible for people who want to get in touch. And Last but not least, it does make it easier to make those simple updates. So thinking about you've changed location or you need to add in an address or you need to actually add in some information about your business online, it's really easy to be able to do that with the platform. Okay. So next up, we're going to talk about... Quick question. Did you yes, yes. Question? Can you define... C ah, <laughs> yes. Search engine optimization. So thinking about... When someone Googles you or goes online and is trying to find your business, what they will type in is probably some specific keywords. So say, for example, you're looking for a plumber or you're looking for a painter decorator or someone a little bit, if they're providing a different service offering, website design, for example, you would type in website design in Cambridge. Those keywords, they are search engine optimizable keywords that you can add to your own website which will help them find you, okay? Brilliant, great questions. And I'm glad you're looking at that as well. I'm gonna keep going, um, but just shout when there are questions that you think that are relevant for me to answer, okay? So we're gonna cover the five traditional platforms which have been pretty much known through household names. So for example, everyone has pretty much heard of WordPress. Um, WordPress is a, helps you create a variety of websites that you can do blogs, e-commerce stores, you can do big big corporate websites, and it lets you basically build something from the ground up. You don't necessarily need to have, um, you don't necessarily have to have any kind of platform that is easy, but with WordPress, it can be easy and it can be quite tricky as well. So they have plugins and they have themes that you can choose from and you can customize it using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So they are the coding programming languages that you could use, but it can get quite technical. Again, these are traditional platforms. Another one we're looking at is Joomla. So again, Joomla helps you create complex websites and online applications. Again, in the same format as WordPress, it covers, it, it has a range of templates and extensions. Now you can further customize this with PHP and HTML. So again, we're talking about platforms that are quite technically advanced, which is which is the traditional way that things have always been done in the past. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another platform you may have heard of is Drupal. This again allows you to create complex websites and applications in the same way that Joomla and WordPress does. It has a range of modules and themes. And again, we're talking quite technical stuff at this level, this top level. So um, customize it with PHP and HTML. Moving on, can't mention a traditional platform without mentioning Magento, which is um, an e-commerce platforms. 
it helps you create those online stores. Again, lots of features that can you can plug in and plug out to make sure it really works for your needs. But again, you are using PHP, HTML, and added code to help you actually build what you need to for your, your vision, for your, your brand, your business. And obviously, when we're talking about um, e-commerce platforms, I can't not mention Shopify Plus. Now, it'll be interesting to know who has an idea of these five traditional platforms, um, if you've heard of them, if you haven't, because they are, as I've mentioned, they are platforms that have been long standing. They've been going on for years and years and years. So they're, they're, they can be household names in particular with like WordPress, for example. Now, Shopify Plus um, it is focuses on e-commerce. Again, you've got the same kind of features and availability that you have with the other platforms still customizable but it's aimed at larger businesses and enterprises so that's that's rangely that's basically covering all the five traditional platforms that you may have heard of in the past any questions have i missed anything so far everyone okay good right now we're going to move on to low code and no code platforms so these are more these are platforms that have been introduced in more recent years so you may have heard of them, you may not have, but essentially low code and um, no code platforms are tools that allow you to create websites, applications without knowing any code. We're talking, you can literally sign up to one of these platforms. Um, some have trial periods, some may have a pay for straight away, but usually they have trial for periods. You can sign up and you can start experimenting by drag and drop visual aids. So you don't need to know any code. And that's the best thing about them, that you have these visual interfaces and pre-built components that allow you to kind of create a website, create a page, depending on what your vision is for what you're trying to create. So we're going to cover five um, top platforms. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to do this presentation without mentioning Squarespace, seeing as that is my area of expertise. Um, to give you a really top level view about what Squarespace is, it's a low code drag and drop website builder. It gives you a range of templates and customizable options. You can add in e-commerce functionality so it can take on the likes of like Shopify and Magento. You can create a specific member login area if you have a community or want to provide paid for content. Um, it allows you to really easily optimize the website for so going back to seo which was search engine optimization you can add in those keywords in a really simple format you've got um analytics available and you can connect with third parties so if you're taking payments through it you can also do connect to stripe and paypal and stuff like that okay so this is the first um low code platform that we're going to cover the second one is wix i'm pretty sure most people will have heard of wix um I was going to say show of hands, but I can only see a few of you, but yeah, <laughs> there we go. I can see Louise's hand. Um, so Wix, again, it's a no-code website builder. It's drag and drop interface. Again, you have this variety of templates and themes, which just makes it easier to get your online presence up and going. So you don't necessarily need to have like a website designer or a developer to help you get some something up and running. Um, and it does integrate really, really well with popular services like PayPal, MailChimp, Google Analytics. A third one that's come up more recently is Webflow. Now, again, these are all no-code, low-code platforms. And what's really great about them is that you can create something responsive. So if you think about your website on desktop, you also want it to look brilliant on um, a mobile device and tablet, because let's be honest, everyone jumps on their mobile phone nowadays and tries to find information so quickly. So these low-code, no-code platforms, Squarespace, Wix, Webflow, they allow you to be able to create that kind of automatically um, perfect website on these devices, no matter what device you're looking at, and you don't need to know code for it, okay? Um, because of the nature of these platforms, everything is drag and drop, so you can literally pick something up and move it, and it'll be on the other side of the screen, so you can move stuff around, make it really, really flexible without actually knowing anything, any code. And again, supports Zapier, Google Analytics, popular services that you would naturally expect to be able to connect to. 
Now, we've already covered Shopify Plus in the traditional platforms, but Shopify also has a service that is um, low code specific for e-commerce platforms as well for e-commerce um, functionality. Again, it's great for online stores. You don't need to any, know any code. Um, you've got the templates and themes and it's fully integrated with the likes of like Facebook and Instagram. The last one we're going to cover today is Card. So again, this is this is a platform that I've only just recently come across and it allows you to create these one page beautiful layouts without code. It's drag and drop. Um, it's a good option for creating landing pages and portfolios. But I would also keep in mind that if you are looking to expand on creating a website that's not just a single page, then I think about what that vision is, what your what the purpose of is, what the purpose is for your website, for your business, and then explore what platform would be best. Now, I'm more than happy to kind of at the end answer those questions or if anyone feels the need to reach out and ask me what their situation is, more than happy to kind of discover and help you along those lines as well. Okay, so we've spoken about the traditional platforms and we've spoken top level about the more modern ones being no code and low code. What I wanna do now is drill down a little bit further into kind of covering WordPress in specifics and then Squarespace as well, because they're probably the most well-known out of the two traditional modern platforms, CMS platforms. Um, and plus, you must, everyone's pretty much heard of WordPress, I imagine, because it's a household name. I think it's been with us for so many years that you cannot not have been in a business or in that kind of environment and not know what WordPress is or not heard the word at least once. But did you know there are two types of WordPress? Okay, so you've got WordPress.com and you've got WordPress.org. They are very different in their setup. So you've got WordPress.com over here. And this allows you to create a website without having to install any software or manage the web hosting. So what that means is when you actually put something on the internet and you've got your online presence, it has to be hosted on a particular platform. So that platform would be wordpress.com, but you don't have to install it onto a machine or any kind of device that you have in your business setup. You can leave it where it is and it will host it and look after it. Um, they offer, well, wordpress.com offers lots of free plans, um, a range of plans, including a free one. And it allows you to use, it allows you to customize and have control over what you can do, but it's limited. So there are limitations to wordpress.com and using that platform. Wordpress.org, however, is self-hosted. This means that you can download and you probably have in the past maybe downloaded a um, the software onto your own platform, so onto your own machine, your PC, whatever that might be, onto your own server. And therefore you're responsible for managing anything that happens to the site and to that platform at that point. It just makes it a little bit easier for you to customize and control elements of the website when you're creating something. But it does mean that you'll also have that, that responsibility of making sure that website security is up to date any plugins that need to be updated, that's all on you. Okay. Um, I can see some conversation in the chat. So I'm going to leave that with you, Louise. So whether you want to, yeah. yeah. I've got a question okay. about the WordPress site, but maybe we'll do some at the end because I think they, Brilliant. they might be longer answers. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not ignoring you. No, not ignoring you, Stacey. I can see that as well. So we'll come back to it. <laughs> okay. So that's WordPress, the traditional platform top level covered. Now I'm going to go into Squarespace. So Squarespace, as I've mentioned, it is a low code website builder. It's really user friendly interface and it has a range of templates. So we don't go with themes. We go with templates on Squarespace and it's quite very easy to customize the design of the website as well. Now, there's a big myth about Squarespace. A lot of people may have not heard about it or you may have. I mean, since the pandemic, I've known a lot more people have so either heard about Squarespace because they've seen the adverts on the telly or they've they've heard about it on the radio and it's just been a bit more prominent and what they don't realize is that Squarespace actually offers features like e-commerce you can have that member area that booking online using scheduling these are all these are all part of the service different services require a little different payments to them but it's all integrated which just makes it a lot more easier to be able to add add in um 
what you might need as your business or your your brand develops okay and what's really great is that it integrates really well with like the likes of google analytics mailchimp adobe creative suite so you may not know about some of these like especially adobe creative suite but in a nutshell it gives you um access to a wide range of like fonts brands um which can be specific to what you need for your website okay and also there's great support as well. There's 24-7 support, customer support. And I, I've been using it for a number of years now and found that if whenever I've reached out to them, they're always available. So awesome. Right. So we've done the platforms, traditional platforms. We've done the no-code platforms. And now we're going to go into covering what the benefits and the challenges are because let's be honest every single platform there are always pros and cons you can't get away with just saying that one is particularly brilliant compared to another so it's always good to cover both obviously we're going to cover the challenge we're going to cover the benefits first and then we'll discover the challenges together so first one first it's easy to use i've already mentioned this and it is because it's so so user friendly depending on how how quick and easy you are in, and how tech savvy you are i guess um but it's very intuitive and this goes for all no code and low code platforms so there is there is a level of like you have to learn it to get on board with it but it's not as it's not as hard as understanding a traditional platform like wordpress where you might have to go through some of the from the code to make some simple changes point number two here we've got faster development and deployment time this basically means that because they've got these pre-made templates it's a lot easier for you to actually create a website page or a website or application really quickly. Um, the drag and drop interface, that just makes it a lot easier to kind of navigate yourself around. You don't have to worry about um, the traditional coding methods. And it's to give you an example, when I set up my website about nine years ago, and that I used to be on WordPress, I was like, I can't, I don't have the ability and the capability to sit at the back end of my website understanding all this code and I'm, an, I'm a coder. I didn't want to do that. So I thought there's got to be another platform out there. That's when I found Squarespace and decided, let me see how quickly I can get my business up and running. So bearing in mind back then I was working part time. I had a, had a young child, a newborn baby, and I was trying to set up the business for me to get online and find a platform that was no code, just investigate it. Within a two week period, I'd managed to actually get a website up and running, redesigned it and actually had a blog post up and running. So it is a lot quicker to get things online and to get you moving a lot faster. There's not That's not to say you can't tweak things later because you can, it's got that functionality available. Point number three, it's lower costs. So, Essentially, you don't need to hire any developers. You don't need to purchase any software licenses or anything like that to keep it up and running. You may have an in initial payment to make as a subscription to the platform itself. But generally speaking, if you're hands on with it, you, your, your costs will be lowered for maintenance. Covering point number four, we've got customization options. So you, I've already mentioned you get these pre-built templates. There are widgets and integrations that are naturally natively available to those particular platforms. They do vary depending on the different platform you go for, but generally speaking, they will be integrating the, the big brands that you can be familiar with, for example, Stripe, et cetera, MailChimp. Scalability. Now, this one's a good one because a lot of people don't realize that no-code platforms can be really scalable. They think that you can just kind of you're, you're restricted to having something very small, but that's not the case. These platforms are designed to help you build and grow as your business builds and grows as well. So you've you've got to think about the new functions and function functions and features that are available that you might need when your business develops. They can be clicked on and clicked off. It's very scalable. And the last one being support and maintenance. So usually you'll find that with with traditional platforms, we have an element of bug fixing or security updates or plugin updates, things like that. So when you've 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 traditionally added a plugin to your website, that might need some maintenance. You might need to click a button to say let's update that, but then you realize something else is broken somewhere else on the site. With no code platforms and low code platforms, what you'll find is that that support and maintenance is done by the platform provider. So in particular, if we're thinking about Squarespace. 
if there are any major updates that need to be made, they do them at the top level. And obviously there may be some areas of bugs that come up, but generally speaking, they know that how many people are using the platform. So they're not gonna you know, put something out into live and not expect it to break. It's gonna be quite robust at some points. So that's another great benefit because you don't then have to worry about updating the software. You don't have to worry about something breaking or um, new releases coming out and you have to press a button to update it and it takes time. Usually it's filtered down from the top and it's, it's quite easy to keep on top of support and maintenance. Right, so there are the benefits. Challenges. So this is where it gets tricky, but not so tricky that we can't overcome them. So no code and local platforms. The first one we're gonna cover is limited customization. And now this one, you'll notice in the previous slide, I'd mentioned that the customization is really good, but also you have to bear in mind that depending on what you actually want to achieve from your website, if you're looking to achieve something that's very bespoke and requires a heavy level of customization because you're creating something really complex, then low code may not be the, the platform for you. Therefore, you do need to look at those traditional platforms and try and hack away and create something very specific. So if you're thinking of that, then low code does have its challenges and limited customization. It's got limited functionality in the sense that some of the users um, may not find it as easy to actually make something functionally work, if that makes sense. They all offer um, great functionality, but you might need to supplement it with additional code that you might not know exists until you've kind of developed and further taken a look into what that CMS platform offers, okay? Now, third point, dependency on the platform. This is a really good one because often we become so dependent on things just working that sometimes we might become dependent on knowing that you don't have to update something because Squarespace is handling it for your website. That also means that people become complacent in knowing that they don't have to worry about it. So if you're one of those people, it can come and kind of be a challenge because if they change something and then all of a sudden you realize that it's not how you want it to work, very rarely it's going to be that case. Then there's that dependency element that you just got to be conscious that they may make changes to the site because you don't have that full, full control over it. Right, so point four is the cost considerations. So while we've mentioned that there might be like a, a subscription to the platform, like on an annual basis, or you can break this down monthly if you wanted to as well, the development costs are a lot, they're a lot cheaper, but at the same time, you do have those costs there. It's not like, for example, WordPress, where you can install it the one time and then you've got to maintain it. Um, but then, you have to kind of see if you're installing something and you're then maintaining it, you might need hands-on experience, which you are then paying for. So with no code, low code, the cost considerations are only actually in that initial setup. Or if you're adding in paid for plugins or paid for integrations that don't natively come to the platform. As with anything, challenge five is the learning curve because it is a new form of technology, it is a new form of um, CMS platforms that have just risen and there is a learning curve in understanding how they work so being able to drag and drop say when I say you can drag this text block over here and actually put it onto the right you've got to know how to actually do that so there is an initial learning curve but once you get over that I think it's really quite straightforward to being able to like help you move forward um, and actually it's good to keep in mind that that initial learning curve, it's just at the start. Once you've kind of mastered it, once you've navigated yourself around it, or you've been taught how to navigate yourself around it, it goes away very quickly. So if you've used Canva in the past, that's a no code platform. So initially you wouldn't have actually thought you can create all these beautiful designs on, on a platform that's a no code platform, but essentially you can, you just need to learn how to find all the little bits and pieces and pull it all together. The last challenge we're going to just go into is the migration challenges. And this basically means if you want to move your website or an application from one platform to another platform. Now, this might mean from one no low code to another low code, or it might mean moving from a traditional platform to a no low code or moving away from a low code to traditional. There's a lot of jargon in there. There's a lot of um, 
long words. So breaking it down, if you're migrating from, say, for example, Wix to Squarespace, or you're migrating from WordPress to Squarespace or vice versa, there are limitations in being able to actually take certain amounts of data and how that data you can export and import it across. So it's worth keeping that in mind, depending on what platform you're thinking to move to and from. But the functionality does exist with, within these platforms, all of them. There is some form of functionality that lets you export that data. It just depends on how much you can export and what it is that you can bring over in the right format. So yes, lots of, lots of things there. Right, so we've done traditional platforms, we've done the low code platforms, we've done the pros and cons. Now we're going to go into the top tips. So I'm conscious that we're not running out of time, but I'm conscious that we're just, we're getting to a good point where F FAQs are probably on the way <laughs> um, and Q&As are here. So top tips to then boost your online presence. I actually did have 15, but we've had to bring it down to 10 because there are so many good tips here, right? The first one would be to develop a comprehensive digital marketing strategy. So you need to know what your business goals are and what who your target, target audience is to create a strategy to then help you implement your online presence, right? Shout if that doesn't make sense, but unless you know where, you're, where you are in your business and who you're trying to target to, which is always going to be key, you can then keep those in mind, keep put together a marketing strategy. Um, again, I've mentioned digital here because we're talking about the online presence, not just websites, we're talking about social media presence as well. All of that is included. So creating something of that nature will really help you boost your presence online. Secondly, once you're thinking about creating a website, you want to make it visually appealing and user friendly. Now, this, this is where the website design element comes as part of it and making sure that it's on brand and you're creating a really seamless browsing experience. Because at the end of the day, you don't want something that doesn't connect with the business strategy overall. So making sure you're using your, your brand fonts, your brand color palette, making sure that you've got a really easy streamlined um, user journey. So when someone lands on the homepage, what are you expecting them to do? Do you expect them to buy into a service, buy a product? How do they contact you? Making sure that that user journey is really on point make it appealing. Third thing, third point, optimize your website for search engines. This is the SEO element. So making sure that you're using the right keywords, you're using the right meta tags, and you're creating high quality content. So SEO, search engine optimization. That's what that term stands for. So if I think about when I'm setting up a website, I'm going to use my own website as the example if i want to be known as um if i want people to find me being a website designer or website developer i can say website developer my focus is squarespace so put that in as a keyword and use those keywords to optimize your website so people who are typing into google can find you another good point here is number four is to make the website mobile friendly and responsive so if your website is not currently website is not mobile friendly or tablet friendly and it's not responsive and by responsive i mean you're looking at the different devices on looking at the website on different devices it has to adjust to make sure that you're looking at the right website right, pay, right page if it's not google will automatically penalize you and so will search engine so it's a really important point and obviously we've already spoken about how people jump on their phones or their tablets the really uh, convenient so making sure that it's readily available is really key. Point five there I've got is utilize social media platforms. So again, move if you're thinking about websites, that's fine to boost your online presence. Most people are pretty much on social media platforms or if you've got a business, you'll be on those platforms. What's really key is to make sure that you're engaging with your audience on those platforms. So when you're posting something or when you're sharing something that's valuable and specifically for them or even if it's not it might be a business share once you've got those comments in and once you've got lights in it's really important to engage with your audience make sure that they they feel as part of the business as you're trying to make them feel as part of the business this will make it easier for you to be able to then promote the products promote the services reach out to those people um, when you need them or when they need you point six so we've got 
leverage the power of email marketing. So email lists are really, I'd say they're tricky to get going if you, if you have no clue about how to initiate one, but they are so powerful if you already have an email list. So having something online, having something on your website to say that, you know, you will send them the latest information on your particular product surface, getting them to sign up means that they are part of a community that you're kind of building. It makes it easy for you to then send targeted campaigns, makes it easy for you to then reach out to them, makes it easier for you to turn that prospect into an actual customer. But the challenge here would be that you, you do need to have a little bit of an audience to start with, I think, because otherwise it's very difficult to get someone to sign up. It's, um, it's a challenge because some people don't necessarily want to share their email address and don't want to be spammed. We don't want to be spammed with lots of newsletters. So it's always important, firstly, to share content that's valuable and relatable. But once you've got them onto email marketing, you've got a list of those people, then you can leverage that and really boost your, boost your online presence. Another one is to encourage online reviews and testimonials. Now, this is this is just if you don't do this already, it is I would add it somewhere near the top of the list because the moment people actually write online reviews or write you a testimonial, it builds that trust in your brand and your business. So actually posting that onto social media, saying that this is what our recent customer or client has said about us, actually having that testimonial visible on the website. That kind of stuff really does help you to kind of move forward. Um, and actually, video testimonials are a great way of actually making sure that it's very current and very true because you're actually then watching someone who's explaining how they've used that particular service or product in the past. Point eight is implement an effective lead generation strategy and by this I mean you can offer gated content or special promotion um, and it goes back to the email marketing point because if you're able to capture information from that that visitor or the user you're able to grow your customer base but it helps because if you don't have something that you can offer then people are more than likely not they're not going to know that you're available to actually share that value share that information that you might they might need so creating something to help them connect at that point is is really good incorporate analytical tools or analytics tools so this would be in like um analytics to help you track the website for more performance to help you track conversion rates and actually drive data so once you've got data on your website or web application or even on your online um social media once you've got data to see what people are clicking on or what people are interested in you can then create more content like that and therefore engage with them in a better way give them what they want to hear and what they want to learn from you about as well so analytics allow you to be able to build that raft of information that data and turn it into some juicy content Last but not least, we've got regularly update and maintain your website. So thinking about reviewing every now and again, how many, how many pages there are that have maybe broken links, um, maybe updating your content, checking the compatibility of how it looks on a mobile device as, as opposed to how it looks on a tablet, checking those things regularly, because whenever you make a change on your website, whenever you add something, you've essentially added something new and you have to check that and make sure that it's it's working correctly also when you add content to the site google notices that you're you're adding you're adding stuff to the website makes it more interactive therefore you get more likes to like being pushed to a higher point on the search engine not necessarily page one if you're not already on there already but it just gives you a better chance of being more well known or being recognized or being found okay so they're the top tips Next up, we have the Q and A. So, this is where all those questions that I can see that have popped up in the in the chat. This is this is where we get to go to town with them. But I'll leave the screen up and running because it's got my contact details on it anyway. So you've got my um, website, email. I'm on LinkedIn, so feel free to drop me a LinkedIn connect request. Um, I've got a business page as well, so connect away because I'm always trying to share and help content about CMSs and websites because. That's what I love. So, thank you very much for the introduction into that. Um, awesome. Yeah, I don't know if you, you can probably... Early on, are they free? 
Can't hear you, Louise. Yes, I think we've kind of lost your, your voice again, but let's see. Let me go back and have a look at the chat and see what we've got here. So I can see we have a question or we've got a statement from KP. I use a platform called Viewbook. Don't know if that's CMS. Good question. I am also not sure if it's a CMS because I've not heard of that one before. But if you want to tell me what it does, I can probably help you figure that out. Um, oh, you're muted, KP. It's a platform that was developed for photographers for portfolios. Okay. And they've, um, they've stopped supporting, the company stopped supporting that platform. So my website is sort of sat there. I mean, it's been there for years. And they have offered a different upgrade, but I, I don't like the look of the upgrade. So I'm looking to actually move my website somewhere else entirely. Um, I, I would... think it's no code in that it allows me, it allowed me to bring in photographs, a bit of text, a bit of um, search engine stuff. Okay. So it, firstly, it does sound like it's a CMS platform um, because we're able to put something online and you're able to actually manage that content. So it does sound like one. Mm -hmm. It does also sound like it might be a very specific one to an organization that might have created that in-house and then are, are then providing it to you to use especially if the support is not there anymore because sometimes companies create their own cms platforms and then they are allowing their clients or customers to to use them or buy into them um, and that's that's where things get trickier because if they are big or organizations they will provide you with the support and the maintenance if it's something else if it's something that's been created in houses and within an organization that's where the bespoke code and bespoke technical elements come into play so you do have a cms platform you've mentioned um you're a photographer so no i'm not a photographer i'm a furniture maker but ah, i wanted okay. a website which was mostly visual i didn't want yeah. a lot of not loud word stuff i just wanted mainly visuals with a small amount of um, text under each picture i can i can guarantee you without sounding like I am selling it to you take a look at Squarespace because they are a really great create they offer so many great templates for um creatives in that nature that it is very heavily reliant on photography and it looks very beautiful um that's not to say it doesn't work for the companies and organizations that don't have that kind of material ready and at hand mm -hmm. because you can tailor it to how you want and there are lots of different themes within there as well so take a look at that and see if that would be any good for you to to trial essentially. and in terms of not losing the i mean i have um i have a a website address i suppose i bought um is that what it's the called domain I, name. Bought, I bought the uh, domain name that's the thing <laughs> um would i be able to migrate the whole thing onto square space and then play around with the visuals once i got there absolutely so you would get a two week trial period mm -hmm. and in that two weeks you would be able to kind of set up a site, have a look at the different templates and tinker away with however you wanted it to look. By the end of that two week, they do ask you to actually sign up. Um, yeah. And yes, you can keep your domain where it is. They have the functionality within Squarespace to then connect the domain. So you just have to repoint the DNS settings from where it is at the moment to Squarespace so you can keep that where it is. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more than happy to have a chat with you after yeah. this call as well, because Things like the technical elements of connecting the domain and stuff like that, depending on where it is, there are different instructions for that. Yeah. Also, there are, um, I get a six months trial period as opposed to two weeks. So it might be that we can sort you out with some kind of a longer term period. Yeah, I think it'd be well. good to get, get in touch afterwards. I'm I'm on Indy awesome. as well, so I know you from Oh, are you? Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay, that'd be um, great. I'll get in touch with you afterwards. Excellent. Glad that helped. <laughs> yes, <it> did. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Right. What was the next one? So I can see John, which is a WCMS web content management system. CMS covers integrating document management, digital assessment, which we do have. Okay. Brilliant. Sounds like you know what CMS is. Awesome. We've got, is that through Google Ads? Right. We're going to need some interactivity here. Question about SEO. We were talking about SEO with Deb at the time. Ah, okay. And I think yeah, I can. Someone's uh, answered that further down. Okay. Brilliant. <laughs> ah, brilliant. We've got some people in the know here, so yeah. 
doing <laughs> doing the bits for me. Excellent. Okay, so Stacey, Google Ads and Ads are separate, but they are, they are. Um, Stacey saying, can you explain the limitations? We have a WordPress site and haven't come across any yet. And we expand, and we expand, but yet as we expand, but would it be, it would be good to know for the future what we may come across. Okay, so I've I've had my own WordPress site. Um, so Stacy, I can relate to knowing that when I set up my site back in about ten years ago, eleven years ago, I'd always been on WordPress, and what I found was that I was limited in actually tinkering away in the back end of the WordPress dashboard, um, not remembering how to actually sometimes access it, and then I had plugins. So when I was updating a single plugin that was not to do with any other area of the site I'd find that something else would then break and I'd have to fix that as well and in the nutshell I'd get stuck in the back end of my WordPress site trying to work out how to fix everything and not just publish the blog post or do what I needed to get done um, as a business owner so I thought let's there must be something out there so you might find some challenges along that line so if, depending on what your business is it might be that you have a plugin for I don't know reviews maybe you're selling something It'd be more to it'd be good to understand what kind of business you have so I can tailor that a little bit. Helen, you've got can you talk a bit about security and SSL, please? This is generally provided. Is this generally provided by no loco platforms? Great question. And yes, so I can tell you about Squarespace because they every website comes with an SSL certificate. Um, and I would like to tell you what SSL stands for, but for the life of me, it has completely lost my brain. I've completely lost it. Um, oh, it's going to bug me. Yeah, and when it does, when, when it that. comes back to me, I will share. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got a blog post on my website. Um, that's it, secure <laughs> sockets layer. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, low code, no code platforms, they have this as part of them. I know Squarespace does in particular as well. So when you sign up to the actual subscription and you've connected your domain along with the connection, if you're not purchasing it with Squarespace because they offer domains as well, it gives you that security. And you know you've got a secure website because up in the corner where you've got the little icon, there'll be like a little padlock, that's your security. So yeah, that's generally provided as part of the subscription package. Okay, so is it Ania? You've got here, hi, I can see you. <laughs> You've got, could you expand on SEO, please? What to look for in particular? What's, what's the opinion on all-in-one SEO versus Yoast SEO on WordPress? Any fair preference? So I know that Yoast is probably the most popular one for WordPress SEO. Now, I'd like to say I have an opinion on all-in-one SEO versus Yoast, but I haven't used both of them. I've only used Yoast in the very in the past because that's when I was on WordPress. SEO... Expanding on that, I mean, search engine optimization, what to look for in particular. So when you're creating your website um, or you're creating a page, let's break it down to page. On a single page, you will have a H1 heading style and then you'll have different headings, right? So all those different headings, they are key for your SEO so that it can recognize what is a heading, what is a body, what, what is body copy. And within that, heading so you've got h1 h2 h3 h4 the hierarchy is that h1 is the one you would have at the top of the site and you'd then create others after that those heading styles should have keyword specific content and data so if you want to be known as let's take the furniture let's take kp in the furniture business for as an example if you want to be known as um actually I don't know too much about you, KP, so I'm going to use me as an example because I know that one, <laughs> pretty sure, right? So if I want to become known for branding and Squarespace website design, I would make sure that those keywords are in my H1 heading at the top of my page on my home page. Now, if you are, and I want to maybe specifically focus on Cambridge area, then I would type that in as well. Now on the back end of the website, you'll have like a, an area or on, on the page in the dashboard, you'll have an area where you'll be able to add in some SEO description and a title. At that point as well, you should have your keywords in there. So your, your title will be a number of words or number of characters, but adding in as much as you can. And the, the key thing to remember here is not the keyword stuff, which means don't just add in like um, website designer, Cambridge, Squarespace, 
digital designer developer it has to make sense to someone who's reading it so think about if you were reading that sentence and adding in sent adding words that will make sense to google as well because google will read that and if it sees that it's kind of just added in random words it won't make it it won't make sense to to them or your audience right okay i hope that helped so how would you make take that list of words and make it a google readable sentence Okay, so you would say, on my H1 heading says, branding and Squarespace website design agency. Now in the back end on the SEO title, it'll say, Krishna Solanke Designs is an award-winning branding and Squarespace website design agency catered or speaking to helping, helping small businesses, independents. And it, those keywords that I'm using, small business, independent agencies, they get picked up. So okay. it's almost like as if, you, if you're explaining what you do in one sentence, that would be your pitch sentence. That would be what I would use as your SEO title for your homepage, for example. Okay. Thank you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so what have we got here? Uh, Karina, you have to rush to London. Oh, good. That's fine. Um, hopefully we can catch up soon. IONS is a really easy to use with templates. That can be picture heavy, text heavy, or a mix. So Joanna, good point. So there are lots of different platforms like INS. I think they, I know them as a domain provider. So you can buy your domains there and they've turned into like website platforms and CMS platforms. So you can, and the one thing to really, really keep in mind is for any website, whenever you're adding content to the website, so whether it's images or a PDF, you have to really optimize them. So when you're adding in images, for example, try and bring that picture down in file size or image down in file size and then upload it. Again, that helps with your SEO as well because you don't want your site to be heavy, essentially. So think about when you've downloaded an image or you've taken a high res image and it's like 40 megabytes big, essentially that's gonna slow your website down which will then slow down your online presence which will then just doesn't work in your favor. So optimizing it, keeping it really clean, and there are tools that I can send you guys if you're interested on how to optimize images and um, PDFs as well. They're all online. The majority of them are free, so you don't even have to worry about signing up to anything like that. So let me know. So, Deb, I don't have a website for my organization. I'm a techno number and have a target audience. Who's... Do you want to explain? Because I can see I can see you online as well. I can see your picture, Deb. So. So yeah, you want a recommendation for something that's quick and easy to get something up and running. Um, technophobe. So, okay, so it's, it's that's a challenging one because to some extent you're gonna need to get on board with knowing some technology to be able to put something online, I'm afraid. <laughs> the best thing I can suggest is finding someone who will help handhold you through that process and can show you how to do that. So I've worked with a couple of people in the past who, much like yourself, don't understand or maybe are reluctant, don't quite understand how quickly it can be to update something um, or how to put that presence online. But finding the right person who will help you figure that out is probably the best the best solution in that, in that situation. Um, and you've mentioned to your target audiences as well. So, you know, I think that if they're trying to find you, it's about reaching out and telling them where to find you but getting something basic up and running first mm. that would be my suggestion there quick and easy i mean i can only tell you about squarespace and i know how quick and easy that is it was it took about a week probably take less than that depending on how much content you have ready so one thing to always bear in mind is if you're going to look to work with anyone or if you don't have the capacity to do it in-house or you don't have to do it yourself find someone who will help you work through that but one thing that they will say is do you have the content ready? And by content, I'll go into details saying that that could be the text for the website, it could be the images, it could be any content that you want to have on that, that presence online. If that's ready, it just makes it easier for that person you want to work with because the first thing they'll ask you is, have you got it? If not, can you get it ready? And you've automatically got a delay if you haven't got it ready, okay? So yeah, I also have a website. I also have a link on my website somewhere that tells you, um, what kind of designer would be the best designer for you to work with and what information you should ask them so you can get the best out of them as well. I can share that as well. 
Okay, so Andrea, I've just created an account stroke website on Squarespace. They offered me a 14 day trial, but no information what will happen after these 14 days. Do I need to pay? What are the options? So yes, after your 14 day trial, they will basically, you won't have access to all of the, the pages and all of the areas that you've, you're trialing at the minute. Um, you won't have to pay until you're, un, or unless you want access to all of that. Alternatively, just give me a shout, reach out to me and we can see what we can do because I get the six month trial period. Um, but obviously that comes with the potentials of let's explore ideas working together. Do you need to pay? You would need to pay to get access to those after the 14 days. Um, you could also, I've done this, another few potential clients of mine in the past have done this. They've reached out to Squarespace support and they asked if they could extend those 14 days trial period. Generally speaking, they say no, but if you've got someone on a good day, they might they might be really kind and like extend that again. So no harm in asking and trying to work that out. <laughs> so is that H Thurley? Can you give a ballpark figure on subscription cost associated with low code, no code? Yeah, so to give you an idea, Squarespace do um, an annual payment would be £180, one off fee, but you can break that down monthly. And I think it's like £15 if you do it monthly, because obviously it's it's a slow, it's a lower less, it's a lower amount. Um, but that's only with that platform, and that's on the business plan as well. So you have to then bear in mind that all these platforms have different um, layers or levels. So you've got a personal level, you've got business level, commerce, and then commerce um, advanced. So you need to work out which subscription you'd fit under and then sign up to that as well. Someone's asked, do you know Weebly? I do know Weebly from back in the day, but don't know it as much. I can't give you enough information about it at the moment, but... I have not heard about Weebly in a long time. So sorry <laughs> on that front. Okay, that was a yes to the info on optimizing images. Okay, I have a PDF that I can send to you guys as well. That would be happy to send that across. That just kind of gives you access to where to go, how to upload it and what to do. Awesome. It's been really good. I can't see any more questions in there unless I've missed something, but do let me know in the chat or someone come online and talk to me. <laughs> Please. Thank you very much, Christine. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. That's it. <laughs> I can. It does. I can just about hear you as well. So I'm no, glad no, everyone no. had a good time. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, it was my pleasure. I love talking to everyone and I hope you got some great takeaways from it as well. And as I mentioned, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to kind of connect and say hello and talk about it again. So yeah. Fantastic. And we've got some things to send around as well. And obviously Christian's Christian's gosh, I can't speak. Krishna's details. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They're all going straight to your website. Oh, are they? <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't fall over itself then. <laughs> <laughs> and back on time as well. Thank you very, very much. Thanks to everybody yeah. for coming along. Brilliant. Thanks, Krishna. Thank you. Thanks for everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely to see you all today. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Bye.